Hey folks, Quilly Keen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Football Manager 2017 as Air United. And welcome to what I thought for a very long time was going to be our final match of the season. Except it's not! Apparently, and I've been told this, we'll see exactly how it works out. Apparently, what will happen here after our final match, after everyone in the Premiership League has played against each other three times, what happens is the league splits into two, right between the 6th and 7th place over here, and then you want to play one more match against everyone else in your half of the league. Which is a little bit unfortunate that we didn't manage to stay in 6th place overall, because we would have been in the top half. Now, raising beyond 6 would have been hard, but we would have been locked in. As is, we're going to come in potentially at the top of the bottom half, but in a very tight competition. So we've apparently, assuming I've got this right, we've actually got seven more games to, to go. This one and then, sorry, six more games to go. This one and then five more afterwards to establish our position in the bottom here. And we can't rise beyond seventh after that. Uh, so this remains a very important game. But uh, frankly, I think that all this one and the five after this are going to be critical for our final placement because it's going to be it's going to be a big challenge for us to play all these folks and still stay on top, given how tight everything is. And that's a little bit terrifying. And one of the reasons there was quite a bit of a delay here uh, between this episode and the previous ones because I have been stressed to the max. But let's do what we can. The match is today. We're playing Aberdeen at home. Um, Aberdeen over here, so they are higher rated than us, you know, might be a little stronger coming in. Um, I don't know, can we, we can access their schedule somehow, right? Yeah, their schedule. I don't know on what kind of streak they've been. Two losses, two wins. Yeah, so, you know, about, about a mixed bag. And ourselves, uh, we're coming on sort of a weaker sort of, uh, uh, stint over here with two draws and two losses. So morale might be a little bit harder up. Of course, we, I mean, you know, Celtics, Rangers, and Motherwell and Hearts, both really good teams as well. Uh, so it'll be a challenge. We're going to go in here with our 5-3-1-2 setup, and we've got the old pairing up front. Well, the young pairing really is what they are. Uh, but the established ones for us, we're starting off Thomas and McGuffey up front. If they... If anyone can do it, they can do it. Now, Thomas is a little low on the sharpness, unfortunately, but his morale is fantastic. He's got a 7.24 average over the last five games, which is really good for us. It's actually... Is it actually the top on our team? I could resort it. Oh, no, Sasha uh, Kotic over here, who we are not starting, is actually top uh, right now. We may actually want to start, if not at least have uh, available as a substitute. Uh, Darren Legat's done pretty well. He's got good morale. Like, I'm wondering, Tom Flanagan, he, he does good. He's actually a really strong player. I'm worried about, a little about his morale, though. But, like, how do you really sub that guy out? How do you have not Ricky Lamy in here? Um, and, yeah, Magat's been doing well as well. But you know what? We'll put, we're going in Sotish instead as as the possible substitute uh, for our central defenders over here. And that might be okay. Uh, other than that, no real change to the directions. I think if we were to go and proceed with uh, this general configuration um, next season, I think I would explicitly set up these two as wingbacks instead of fullbacks so we can get a little bit more support up the sides. We're going to go play out the fence, run at the fence. Um... Work ball into box, whip crosses, exploit the middle, look for overlap, close down more, lower tempo. I have been experimenting with a few other games off off on my own, um, and I have discovered that the prevent short goal kick uh, distribution is actually quite nice. Um, really going to force the goalkeeper to pass, like, you know, a long bomb in distance and possibly lose possession that way. Um, but... Um, I'm not going to make any changes to our team instructions uh, at such short notice because uh, we don't still have our familiarity fluid in every way. It's the tempo isn't quite there. Um, I suppose I could just remove the lower tempo instruction. And that would actually get us fluid throughout, and that may actually be the better idea here. I think the holding up the ball a little bit with low tempo is probably a good way to go, but you know what? Let's remove it for now. We'll go in with this with maximum familiarity. We're going to play control. We did a little bit of uh, defensive positioning training over here, not to give up anything stupid. Um, and let's see what we can do with this. I think that's got to grind another hour or two here just to move forward before we uh, actually get to the, our match. So we'll see how it goes. But I am very stressed. I'm very disappointed we couldn't come in sixth, you know, but... At this point, I mean, we're, we're too far behind. Clearly, it wasn't just, like, a matter of a couple points here and there. There's there's a big gap between us and sixth place. Um, and so, you know, there's nothing really we can do about that. But the battle to hold seventh is going to be in 
intense. Here's a match preview over here. Uh, 14 degrees, calm, very good pitch. Uh, all the weather's good everywhere. We've won two games and drawn once against Aberdeen before. They've never beaten us. Hopefully that's not the case here. Uh, this referee seems to be a little bit more on the chill side than some of the others, so we might go and ramp up uh, some of our aggression. We'll see how it goes, see how things develop. He might be having a cranky day. We don't know yet. Team selection. So this is going to be the team we go with. I think that's going to be fine. We are starting Emmanuel Thomas as opposed to Chris McGuire. Emmanuel Thomas um, does have a slightly better performance than Chris McGuire. They're pretty similar over here. Uh, he's been hoping for a bit more first team play. He doesn't have the same tactical familiarity as everyone else. He's a little lower than Chris, but again, it's pretty close there. We'll probably end up subbing between the two, so I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Uh, Chris Crawford, it, it, or Robbie Crawford over here, sorry. Uh, Robbie Crawford is... Uh, poor guy is, is really not necessarily that well suited to, I think, premiership football. And he has actually a lot of skills have been decaying. I don't know if he hasn't been playing as much or what's going on here. What's his, what's your deal, man? Uh, 11... 11 starts, 11 subs. So he's played 22 times. So it's not like he has me getting played. I don't know why he's not doing as well. He is tutoring someone. So I don't know. Maybe that's taken away from his training time. I'm not sure. Uh, Gary Frazier, his three half stars, 7.12 rating he's been doing for us so far. Really pleased with that. Andy Gigan, he can go out and get a yellow today if he wants. I don't care one way or another. Be nice if he didn't get a red. But the odds of that are a little lower. So... It does suck that Ricky isn't feeling great and Tom isn't feeling great, but they are pretty strong for us. So I think we're going to go with this. Let's submit, submit the team and see what the odds makers have to say about all this. I'm really stressed. Come on. Warm up, warm up, warm up, warm up. I mean, in a sense, this one game isn't actually that important. In a sense. But in a sense, this is one of six incredibly important games at the end here. I thought we'd pulled this off to be relatively safe. Uh, well, I mean, I guess this was going to be an individually more tense game because it was going to be we have to win or we don't end up seventh. But now it's going to be we have to win this one and probably three others to guarantee our end up, uh, that we end up in seven. We're a slight favorite over here. Uh, that won't be too, too bad. But yeah, a lot of people could overtake us depending on who they're playing. Partrick Thistle against Dundee. Um... Falkirk is playing against Motherwell. Yeah, that'd be a little harder for them to pull off those wins. So it might, you know, help us out a bit. We'll see how it goes. All right, continue to opposition instructions. We've got a Mr. A. Rudy over here. Uh, what are you looking like in terms of speed? You are not fast. So first of all, I'm going to apply your advice to the team. I was going to say, yes, I will tightly mark the striker. That sounds good. We'll go ahead and take those things as is. I wonder why it suggests, like, tackling this person hard. Like, what's the deal what causes that recommendation? Is it like a lack of strength? That's not the case, clearly. Is it a lower dribbling? It, doesn't, it also doesn't seem to be the case. I don't know why they recommend tackling certain people hard, but I'll just go with it. Okay, team talk. Uh, we're going to be assertive here. Um, yes, nothing but a win from this match to cut a recent run of bad luck. We've had four games that haven't done that well. Well, speaking of not doing well, this particular chat, you can make a difference. You can make a difference. You can make a difference. Okay, that may have worked out a little bit better. Ricky Lemmy's not feeling it completely, but we'll do what we can. And with that, let us start the match. Woo! So, we're playing at home. We're in our white and black stripes. And uh, Aberdeen are in their uh, sort of, I don't know, desaturated red outfit. It's not like a bright red color. I don't know. Not impressed with it. Uh, slide tackle there is going to give them a throw quite close to her. Oh, no, free kick quite close to our goal. Tony Ralston knocks it away. Oh, I thought that was going to be a snipe there. They're actually staying on the offense. They've got a pretty good chance to fire and knock it in. Oh my god. A minute and eight seconds in and we get scored on. Here I thought maybe, you know, doing the defensive training wasn't right and I should have focused on the attack, but apparently it wasn't enough. What the hell? That was absolutely embarrassing. Like, hang on. I'm going to, like, yell um yeah don't don't stress out too much i'm gonna encourage and try to keep their morale up a bit okay this haze guy just keeps beating us again and again and again uh slide tackle there which he just dives over holy shit how why are we getting destroyed like is it just me or are we getting obliterated possession is about 50 50 they've only gotten two shots on but they've been insane i feel like there have been some some tackle failures over on, I guess this would be our right side. Let me take a quick look at our um, 
match stats, I guess. No, what's the one I want? Analysis? That's the one. Analysis teams. Are, are these being counted as mistakes at all? Mistake, lost ball. I mean, not really. Uh, just show me. Tackles lost. Four of them. Because I remember this one. That was Tony Ralston. And over here, it's Andy Gagan. Yeah, I don't know. Ralston's been doing some. Huh. I don't know. we got to tighten up this defense. This has been brutal. We're lucky that we're not down two. He's an accomplished crosser of balls. Yeah, I... Okay. Let's take a look at Hayes and what our situation is with him. You're not using this micromanagey. We always tighten them. Yeah, we'll close them down aggressively as well. Although, it looks like we've mostly been doing that. Manuel Thomas with the free kick goes well over. We actually have a possession advantage here. But I think that was our very first shot. And it was well off target. We haven't had a real shot on yet. Crane to Thomas. Here we go. We got some aggression going on. Uh, I was going to say McGuffey was offside. Thomas actually bounces it off someone's body on a shot that otherwise would have been wild. I think he might have intentionally tried to bank it off like this to generate a corner, which is pretty good. We got Gary Fraser taking the corner here. Uh, Gigan tries to get his head on, doesn't quite do it. McGuffey, though, is able to get his feet on the ball. He's just going to go around everyone. I'm really surprised he didn't go for a pass. He does try to cross it in here, but there wasn't anyone right in position. Fraser keeps it in the penalty box, and he Gigan picks it up and tries a power shot. It bounces off a body and scores. I'm... Assuming, yeah, Gigan does get credited with that. Oh my god. That was I think that was his first goal of the season. I think that's what it just said there. Unbelievable. Andy, who has been a, a real, like, consistent player for us for three seasons now, uh, played exclusively in, in his defensive role and has been a linchpin there for us, gets us a incredibly critical goal. Here's this Rooney fella over here. Slide tackle. No, that was an actual shot. No, it is going to be a corner. I'm surprised. All right. I don't know. I guess it was a tackle or maybe a deflection. We're 3-4 on shots now. 1-1 one, one overall. Still a slight position edge. These these aggressive plays are a little scary. Ricky Lamy's golden head clears it. And Andy Gigan, who's having a masterful game today, beats the opposition to the ball. Gets it up to Thomas. Thomas gets it wide over to McGuffey. McGuffey sort of maybe dribbled mistakes a little bit. But he's able to recover. Pass it up to Fraser. And Fraser connects it to Thomas, who doesn't even one time. He actually seems to hold it up a little bit, like, because it maybe came a little high. Forward somersault from Thomas to celebrate that beautiful Beautiful, beautiful goal. Thomas, of course, has been our leading goal scorer throughout. I believe that's his ninth goal of the season. It's not a lot of goals because we have been swapping a lot of strikers, so none of our strikers have particularly impressive stats. We got Robbie Crawford over there. Does beat another Aberdeen person. I think, was that Weatherspoon? I've been to a lot of Weatherspoons. Um, does beat him to the ball, but unfortunately, it looks like we don't turn that around. We have 4 4 in shots, 2 1 lead, slight possession boost. Our pass completion rate is slightly better. That's great. That's probably where our possession edge is coming from, just from the pass completion thing. That's why I like that breakdown, because it's like possession by itself doesn't necessarily tell you why you're behind or ahead on possession. Is it because if you're behind on possession... It, oh, it's Weatherspoon. Is, is it, are you behind on possession because the other team is taking it super careful and slow? Or are you behind on possession because you keep getting uh, intercepted? Uh, Rooney's going to take another shot there. He's under a lot of pressure, but people seem to be having a real hard time taking the ball away. Uh, over here we may have to instruct a little bit more aggressive um um tackling now we have to do that individually like we can close down more for everyone i guess we could say get stuck in that might not be a terrible idea actually uh get stuck in this referee is a little bit chilled so far the fouls aren't so huge not a single yellow card to date and we're having problems taking away the ball from some of these people. And I'm worried that's going to lead to another goal at some point. So, yeah, let's go ahead and be a little bit more aggressive. Um, Adam Rooney over there. Not Andy. Uh, yeah, play well. I'm going to say, listen, with passion here. Things are going well, but I know you're capable of even better. All right, you listen keenly. I guess that'll have to do. Morale's not great across the board. Performance-wise, no one has a horribly low scores. Um, I do feel like Craig hasn't had a lot of opportunities there, and he's trying to run a lot with the ball, which is a bit surprising to me, but I guess isn't the worst. Why is Sasha feeling so terrible? Come on, man. So no substitutions quite yet. Still about even on shots. Um, luckily, we've been making our, our shots count a little bit more now. For a change 57 to 43 percent possession is pretty significant although we're going to lose it right there kind of an aggressive forward pass but i mean we've seen worse looks like an um an offside from the other side does leave us to a deep goal kick uh but we don't get possession from that 
I don't remember. We do have play out defense, although I think we might need to explicitly give the goalkeeper some extra instructions to distribute the ball a little bit shorter, but I don't always want that, so I think it's fine. Rooney with the header! Why are... Like, we've got... Mark him close down more. I, we've got tackle hard on Hayes. We've got the get stuck in. It, it feels like we're just not able to get the ball away from these people, and I don't know what we can do more than just this. Ricky Lamy is getting down to a 6.3 rating, and I'm kind of buying that at this point, to be honest, that he's not really performing for us. So we're going to go ahead and bring in Sasha, who does feel miserable. Maybe he'll feel a little bit better uh, going in there. It's still early enough, I think, for some more substitutions, but um, we're going we're gonna to go ahead with this. Um, confirm sub. I'm going to give you a talk. I don't usually, but uh, I'm going to say, listen, um, uh, show me what you got. Show me what you got. Seems confused and demotivated. Awesome. That's, that makes me feel really good. So just like that, it's a tie game. 6-6 six, six on shots, 3-3 three, three on target, 1-1 one, one off target. Same scores, same corners, fouls are basically neck and neck. We still get the edge in possession and pass completion, but now, once again, it is anybody's ball game, which is a term you normally apply, I think, to baseball, but there's also a ball in football. It's right there in the name. Come on. Come on. There's Weatherspoon trying to open another uh, branch somewhere. Oh, fails to do the pass. And just like that, we play a little pinball. Get it to Emmanuel Thomas. He gets it to Fraser, who knocks it up to Thomas. He's got a lot of people on him. He's going to have to dump the ball. Where's he going to go? Oh, he just gets fouled from behind. A free kick here. Uh, it's probably not close enough for anything crazy to happen from that, unfortunately not. Here comes Sasha Kocic coming on for Ricky Lamy, whose golden head uh, has maybe not been as golden as we would like today. There's an opponent uh, corner there, which is still leading them to having possession. Looks like we're going to get another cross here from Shinny. Hayes gets on it, and just like that, we're down by one! Are you kidding me? God damn it! Look, our, I, our stats are good. We just can't stop these bastards. Start tackling him hard. I know it might draw penalties, but you know what? Just do it. Just cripple these guys if you have to. <laughs> I mean, we do have five other games to play after this, and we might be able to reboot our six, but it's, there's not a lot of breathing room. We really need all the points we can get, especially if, like, the three people behind us all happen to book some points. Could you imagine how hard that would make our life? Crane centers it over to Andy Gigan. Gigan. Backward, back of the foot pass attempt to Emmanuel Thomas. But that pretty much does get intercepted. There's Wotherspoons again. With his cheap Curry. Flanagan with a sliding tackle. Does get the ball away, but still going to allow a shot on the other side. Luckily it goes wide, because honestly it felt like Alexis Savage was a million miles away over there uh, to be able to stop that. All right, Tony Ralston, with the throw-in, gets it to Gary Fraser, who bops it back to Ralston, and finds a little window for Emmanuel Thomas. Sends it wide over to Thomas himself, who's got a big wall of red in front of it. Crawford's got some space. Can you get it up to McGuffey? Sending it wide to Caleb Crane, who does get it to Thomas! Oh, that was gorgeous. That was textbook. Really short-range sort of cross there, um, and fast. Everything. The pass delivered with speed, and the shot from Thomas, just one shot, one time there, delivered with a mass amount of juice, and we are all drawn up again with about 20 minutes left. Another substitution coming on the other side. Let's take a quick look at the opposition stuff, because we haven't been using the, um, the position stuff too much. Let's take a look at, uh, Miley's story over here. Uh, he is very fast. I don't think we can permanently mark him, but we're still gonna go ahead and say, close down fast, close down hard on this guy. Bam. We're going to do that. Any subs on our side? Uh, we're starting to get a little bit tired here, but not the worst performance. I think we're going to swap out Mr. McGuffey. He doesn't seem to be having... He's, he's not getting passed too a lot, but he might be just not getting in position very well. That was an interesting... I don't th thought that was a failed pass from Thomas, but I realized it was trying to get the deepest possible cross you could manage there. Uh, almost went outside. But yeah, I think we'll pull off uh, Mr. Crawford. We'll bring him uh, Adama Niani over here. Um and see what he can do. Again, it might have just been a positional thing. If nothing else, some fresh legs on the offense there might be good. Uh, that's our second sub. We could do a third sub at exactly the same time here. Um, let's bring in Ross Doherty here. He doesn't have the greatest sharpness, but I think the midfield sort of action might be good. Because <sighs> we don't... Yeah, a little tired there. It's about... Mm, no, I think this is going to be fine. There we go. Done and done. Let's see what we can do. We still have the possession edge. Shots are about the same. 
God damn. And the pass completion rate, I'm happy we got the big edge there. Like, it's feeling good, but... Alright, we got a... Kind of an awkward free kick coming in here from Aberdeen. Reynolds gets his head on it. Savage knocks it away. Doesn't go out of play, but then I think that was Fraser who may have been able to clear it. It's going to be a throw in from Aberdeen. But at least we got out of the danger zone here a little bit. And we are still on the defense. This could end in a draw, which is far from the ideal, because we're really looking to book three points. But I guess we'll take what points we can get here. Oh my god, this Hayes guy is a monster! He's a monster! And this Rooney guy is pretty good too! Alright. Oh, Doherty with a beautiful steal away. Centers up to Manuel Thomas, who can easily send it forward to Nyane. Ooh, who holds up the ball, surprisingly, here. Back to Emmanuel Thomas, who gets it wide to Caleb Crane, who will probably cross it to Thomas with... It felt like he just got his knee on there. Like, it was just... It was, like, waist high. He leapt a little and sort of kneaded in is the way it felt. And just like that, we move back up to seventh position. We had dipped down. With very few minutes left, it feels like we might be able to secure this win. Anything can happen in two minutes of foot soccer ball. But with us having the possession of the ball right now, I'm feeling all right. Gary Fraser gets it over Thomas. One timer over to Manuel Thomas, who just sends it. I think it was an attempt to do a forward pass, and it looked like Yanni got a little bit caught up there with one of the defenders and wasn't able to execute that through pass um, to completion. But, you know, nice try. We are on the defense here, but... Oh, no. Ooh, maybe. Yes, Thomas with the taking the ball away. It is going to lead to... Wait, how was Thomas offside? Did he not take the ball away? Maybe the other person didn't have control over it yet? Emmanuel Thomas. Ah, oh, Thomas fails to get there. This is a little bit scary. They've got some real speed going on there. There's some definite pinball going on. Oh my god. Mr. Flanagan. Mr. Flanagan saves us from what would have 100% been an opposition goal if he had not gotten his foot on there. Is leading to a throw in. In it to Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon to Rooney, who does try to center it to McGouch, but Emmanuel Thomas just clears the ball. I have not changed the team instructions at all, but it feels like they are going on a defensive kind of style here. Just get the ball out of here, try to kill a little bit of time, and we should be at full time any moment here. Indeed we do. I was worried they might have been able to execute a little bit of their play, depending on the timekeeper's uh, situation, but this is a glorious victory. Seven points scored might be a record for us in competitive play. Um, that is a lot of goals. Seven in total. Four for us. Uh, um, you know what? I'm Very nice victory. Well done. Looking extremely delighted. Aberdeen is on paper a much stronger team than us. I'm very pleased with that. Now, the, assuming I'm correct here, the league should split. So all of our remaining games will be Thomas and Presses for air. No kidding. Best player in the park. Three goals. Did he get a hat trick? I did not realize he actually got a hat trick. It was Andy Gigan, and then it was all, all Jamie Thomas. What a great... I'm so happy we went and, and signed him up. I'm a little bit sad we don't have a picture for him. Uh, the Welshman over here who had been on loan for us for a while. Um, and we did go and recruit him completely here. Now currently valued at 105k. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, skills are still going up. He's only 22. Uh, he hasn't reached his potential all the way yet either. Um, I'm so... So incredibly pleased. Should we praise him for the last match? This never goes well. But I mean, he got three goals in like a 9.3 rating. Um, I mean, what are we going to praise him? He's already at superb, but um, you superb in front of the goal last time out. Keep it up. Thanks, boss. I'm ha pleased with my performance. Hooray, didn't backfire against us this time. I don't know if it's going to change anything for his professionalism or determination or anything like that, but uh, we did. Okay, so we prepare for stage after split. So if we take a look at our competition now, yeah, that split did happen. We are in the bottom. Um, it looks like Falkirk and Partrick Thistle did not win. I think they both actually lost. I think the Hibs had 39, so they must have just drawn. Take a look at their schedule here and double check. Uh, no, they got a win against Inverness. Really? Okay, I must have misremembered everyone's position over here, but uh, this is good. So we've got a little bit of breathing space, just the tiniest little bit. We can't do better than seventh, unfortunately. Um, but remember that our goal coming in here was just avoiding, like our expectation was avoid automatic relegation. And it is not literally mathematically impossible, but effectively impossible for us to even be in a battle for relegation at this point, because um, we'd have to get, like, we'd have to somehow 
the, this 10 point differential would have to be made up for us to end up being in 11th place. And that feels pretty unlikely in five games, not impossible, but pretty unlikely. Um, but for us, the battle will be to try to stay, um, up in seventh place over here. It would be very disappointing if at the end of this, we actually end up with more points than Aberdeen because we wouldn't go up into sixth place. On the other hand, we are only playing against the bottom rated teams at this point. So it is expected that we should do better here than, um, when we were playing against the entire field over here. Look at this, 75 points for the Celtics. These guys are beasts. They're beasts. Although it tells you something here. The Celtics have uh, lost six times. Like they're dominant over here. They've only lost six times. But if you look at like Inverness over here, they've actually only won three times. Although one of those times was against us. So, you know, we got nothing to be proud of there. We can be proud of the boys though for bringing home this win. Um, it is a damn shame we couldn't be in the top half overall. Um, most likely if we had been in the top half, it still would have been kind of hard to imagine us getting above six. Although there's some tightness there. You know, there was certainly some room to maneuver. Um, and that would have been kind of interesting. And these colors here, I don't know what they represent. This might be, um, uh, like a playoff for like playing in some sort of like European type championship, I bet. I, I don't know actually. Um, but there we, anyway, that's it for today's video. Uh, next time we are going to be playing against St. Johnston over here. Uh, one of the lower ranked teams. This might be a good way to, a good time to book a second win for us and really help bring up the team morale as much as possible. Away, home, home, away, away. Uh, yeah, Premiership Relegation Group is what it's called, but... Um, I feel pretty confident that we're not going to be relegated. I do really want to end up in the seventh place, though, uh, because I think we get more more prize money uh, at the end of the league, depending on where we are. Uh, and it'll certainly impress as many people as possible, raise our reputation a little bit if we can. Um, I mean, we're at two and a half stars now, which is a hell of a lot better than when we started things off. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you guys.